I, um, I have been charged with summing up and drawing conclusions, and which is uh, a little difficult. The, the first point I would like to sort of stress, and it's come out, is that actually agriculture and food systems exist in a global economy. It's part of our economic system. And we have to consider that. Um, I was also at this SUSCON conference, and I take a different view to it than, uh, than you do. Because the question is, you know, what's the driver of our economy? Um, whether it's a green economy or bioeconomy or whatever, actually, the driver is consumption. There you go. <laughs> this is what we have to do. <laughs> and it doesn't matter. You know, the, the thing people say, business as usual is not an option, but actually it is. Everybody, that's still, we've not, not changed that. Consumption, growth, that's the driver of our economic system. So what are we now talking about as alternatives? We're talking about the bioeconomy, biotechnology, the bioeconomy. That just means let's have genetic engineering and a few other things like that, and nanotechnology. Nobody challenges growth. And then, okay, there's a green economy. It's still the same thing. Keep buying, keep consuming. We'll just put a green label on it, and we'll stick a carbon footprint, uh, and we can have carbon trading. It's the same thing. This is a big problem. And the SUSCON conference, for me, those people, were still perpetuating that, using the right words, using the green economy, and I think we saw this, uh, this split at, at uh, Rio plus 20. The other myth about the economy is let's all make money. Because if we make money, <laughs> the wealth trickles down. <laughs> uh, big laugh for the Prime Minister's husband and George Bush and whoever else, Ronald Reagan, whoever else is there. This is a big myth. We have a growth economy, wealth does where does it trickle? It hasn't trickled down to me anyway. Um, and I think there's a lot of other people it's not trickling down to. It's a story. Growth economy, the wealth doesn't really get spread. And poverty is increasing. The divergence of poverty is increasing. But this is the paradigm. But we have, and part of the green economy, you probably can't see this at the back, is now corporate responsibility. We talk about putting in environmental costs and putting those in the bottom line, and companies are big, big on this kind of thing. The so-called triple bottom line, economic performance, environmental performance, and social performance. Great idea, revolutionary idea in one way, but the business guys have got it. They've got it in their top pocket and their inside pocket. It's now business, again, business as usual. And the fact is that where you have these three values, bottom line accounting is about trading values. The economy, uh, economic growth on the one hand, environmental growth, values, they're all tradable. So if you want economic growth, we can trade it a little bit for the environment. And this, this argument of increasing more output per hectare, that's efficiency. Jesus Christ. We're only living on a finite world of finite resources. How can using more finite resources up, uh, using it faster, using more of it, be in any kind of sense regarded as environmentally sustainable. And we come down to the realization that everything, all the goods and services, everything we consume of more and more is still ultimately based on nature. And the tri triple bottom, bottom line trading and business of us as usual still fails to recognize this. And for me, the SUSCON people in this uh, sustainable consumption conference, to give it its full title, still didn't question that. Sufficiency wasn't an issue for them. The guy from uh, the Unilever would not countenance that you don't need 56 washing up pow powders or shampoos or whatever, because that's how they're making money. It doesn't, they can stick carbon trading labels or whatever, but they're still going to keep churning out those products, because that's the economic driver. And the thing about the organic movement is, and the organic thing, we cannot move into the mainstream and accept these parameters. The mainstream will change us more than we change the mainstream, unless we stick to those kinds of things. That, you know, when the bow breaks, the cradle and everything else will fall and be destroyed. And the thing about organic agriculture, proper organic agriculture, 
with the principles of agroecology and food sovereignty is about recognizing that, recognizing limits and recognizing sufficiency. And that's the thing that, again, you know, I keep saying it, what you're doing, what growers are doing, what organic farmers are doing, is challenging that growth paradigm. The only thing we have to do is actually start talking about it more. We can't afford to hide this under a bushel anymore. We can't afford to be polite about it. We've got to start talking. We've got to continue growing things in the right way, but talking about it more and talking about this real story. I think the... Um, thank you. <laughs> Keep going, Martin. Brilliant. <laughs> I think we've had uh, two excellent presentations. We've had some good uh, questions and comments. And um, I would like to thank on your behalf uh, Nadia and David for coming all of this way and for putting their thoughts together and presenting them to us and giving us a very excellent presentations. Thank you.